Are geometry nodes the coolest thing to ever come to Blender? Maybe. They might be. I'm sort of thinking they are. So in this tutorial, we're going to go through a really simple introduction of how you can use geometry nodes, particularly to create a very dense environment and scatter some foliage all over the place. This is super cool, and I'm really excited about this awesome new feature in Blender, so let's check it out. This is the collection of foliage I used in the image demonstration. You can actually download this pack from my brand shiny new website, motionblendstudio.com, and I've got it on sale there, so go check that out. For starters, though, let's just start with a blank screen in Blender and check out how to set up a geometry node system to work with here. So I'm just gonna delete everything. And uh, I like to rename these tabs just so if I ever wanna add a new layout tab, I can you know, differentiate that. And what I'm gonna do is just split my window up here. And then uh, you'll see if you come over here, this new geometry nodes editor, that's the new addition to Blender 2.92. And this is just fantastic, everyone. There's so many awesome things that we can use this for. So uh, all we need is something to scatter some points on. So, man, scattering, by the way, is not the only application for this. Um, but we're going to demo that. So I'm going to just add a plane here. I'm going to Control A and apply the scale. Now we just hit New here. And you can name this whatever you want. Um, just leave it as Geo Nodes for now. And what we can do is let's add in a, let's just do a Suzanne head over here and move that aside. And then I'm going to shift A and add in a sphere and move that over here. Now I'm going to grab our plane again. And if you can see over here, this is what it's doing under the hood. It actually applies the geo nodes as a modifier so that we can uh, view, turn the display off in the viewport. You can also um, add it over here, geometry nodes. So this works the same way the uh, shader editor or the compositor works, we can just start adding in nodes. Now, uh, one of the first nodes you'll need is a join geometry node because this allows us to join the actual particle distribution with our asset. So this plane asset is being, think of this socket right here as this plane, and we can distribute points on top of this plane using nodes. So if I grab a, uh, I'm just going to type point distribute node and plug that in, you can see our plane turns into a bunch of uh, little points, little volume point things, particles here. Uh, so that's great. If we want to join that with the geometry, because you might be like, oh, where'd my plane go? Well, just take the output again and into that join geometry node, and there it is. So currently, this isn't going to help us much. You can see we can dial up the density of these particles, but it's not doing anything. And that's because we need uh, to tell Blender what we actually want to instance on this plane. So if we drop in an instance node, you can see we can now instance either an object or a collection. So let's just grab Suzanne and voila, we have a bunch of Suzanne heads and we can uh, change the density here. I'm going to get into a little bit more of, of how to fine tune this, but something that's really cool here and really makes this incredibly powerful. If you remember, just a normal particle system setting has a lot of its own limitations, particularly if you wanted to uh, have a tree that has branches, and then if you want that branch to have its own level of branches and its own sort of particle system, well, you could only go one level deep. Well, that's where this really blows all that wide open and uh, we can get sort of infinite levels of customization. So. I'll show you what I mean. Let me, let me take the uh, density of this down. Let's just go 0.1 so there's not too many Suzanne heads there. And if I grab this Suzanne head and just, I'm going to go ahead and just run through the same steps. So I'm going to grab this at a new geometry node and we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to do a join geometry node and then a point instance and point distribute node. I'm going to take the geometry into that join. And this time, let's grab that sphere right there. And there you can see the added effect here if we dial this down. Now, this Suzanne head has a sphere popping out of it. And now, all of the Suzanne heads that were then the second level distributed onto this plane once again have that same sphere. So you, you can see what we do. We could, we could add another an object poking out of the sphere 
And then it would keep going down the different levels of these geometry nodes. And that might not seem like that exciting of a thing, but it's actually, this gives us an enormous amount of control all procedurally using nodes to affect second and third sort of generation of particles. This means really cool things for foliage and trees and things like that. Speaking of foliage, let's demonstrate just how awesome uh, this can be. And we're gonna jump into a little bit more complex setup here with some actual foliage. So uh, I'm gonna, oops, I didn't need to, Delete my plane, might as well. All right, bring that plane back. Uh, Control A, apply the scale. And this time we're going to use some actual assets here. So um, if you're following this along for a foliage tutorial, then you, you wanna either model your own or download some, or you can download some from my brand new shiny website, motionblendstudio.com. I'll have the link in the description. And uh, basically I'm just going to link that folder. This full H pack was set up so that you could take all the guesswork out of having to do any work and just really experiment with uh, geometry nodes. So I made it specifically for this tutorial. It's got shaders and everything, 14 different assets. Um, and if you just link it to your scene, there's one master collection here, but you can see I, I broke everything else up into a collection so that we can easily uh, distribute those. So if I just link the main ground foliage pack, you can see it shows up here in the outliner and uh, these are all the assets. We have a tree stump and then a few rocks, a weeds clump and then a few grass clumps, a couple of flowers, some mushrooms and some pebbles. So uh, that's sort of a, a really great launching point if you wanted to do some quickly scatter some foliage on a ground um, and that was exactly why I made this. So what I'm actually gonna do is just hide this pack initially and let's grab our plane and I'm going to create new geometry nodes and I'll name this foliage. And then we're just going to run through those same steps again, adding a point distribute node, a point instance node, and a join geometry node. And you can see if we instance a collection, we have the whole linked collections that we have that I linked here. Um, ground foliage pack right there and we could link everything within that pack but that's not going to help us too much because there's that one big tree stump um, so it's better to just use some of these other collections that I have split up specifically if you're using this pack um, so let's grab grass clumps if we just link that one here so you might be saying well that looks kind of strange and that's because we have it checked where it's trying to instance the whole collection. If you uncheck that, then it'll just pull different clumps from that grass clump collection group. And you can see uh, just like that, we have a really easy launching pad and we can dial up the density however we want. You'll also notice that you don't need a high level of geometry to scatter these points. It can just be on just a single polygon. If you look closely, the scale and rotation of each individual clump within this collection is exactly the same. So that's not super usable. What we want is to be able to randomize this in sort of an infinite number of possibilities. I'm gonna press in to get rid of that sidebar, give myself some more space here. In between the point distribute and the point instance node, we can add a few attribute randomizers here. So I'm gonna press Shift A and add in attribute randomize. And this node is super powerful because what it allows us to do is basically just type an attribute such as location, rotation, or scale right in here. So if I type scale, it's going to randomize the scale of each of the distributed points on it from a factor of zero to one. So if we crank this up to 10, then it's you know gonna do a factor of zero to 10. Um, so what you can do is just sort of dial that back to something, uh, point, oh, that's 0.151. Point five, something around there is good just to give a nice variety of scale there. You don't want to go less than zero because that uh, will start inverting the direction of your grass, unless that's something you want, <laughs> but just be mindful of that. Zero to uh, whatever value you want there. And then of course we can randomize the seed of that as well. So um, this is super useful for just quickly modifying a scene right on the fly like that. Again, we can dial up the density of the grass right here, and the same attribute randomizers will be applied because it's coming after that distribute node. I'm going to duplicate this node again, and then this time I'm going to type rotation in 
uh, in the attribute field right there. So the rotation one, uh, for something like this, we really want to use the vector option here. Because what this allows us to do, you can see these inputs here, these are x, y, z. If we set the x and the y to zero, we really want, only want to rotate that asset around along the z axis. And uh, if you press in, you can see the transform options there if you ever get lost. So really what this is saying is it's randomizing from a factor of zero to 20 right there. Well, we want it to be uh, an infinite number so we can go all the way up to 360 degrees so that each asset within this collection can have a random value of zero to 360. And then of course the random seed value allows us to affect that as well. So now our, our foliage is looking way more random and uh, in just a few clicks, we're already getting something interesting. I am going to subdivide this plane a little bit just to show you what that does. If we crank this up to uh, something around, well, let's go around 30, and then we can play with this fractal right here. You can see that the, the uh, grass clumps are responding responsively to that, which is super cool. So uh, I can shade smooth this plane and then just grab a point here. We could do some proportional editing if we like, and the grass is staying uh, perfectly attached to that, which I think is really cool, how you can just adjust things on the fly, all procedural and all customizable. Now, if we were making a scene here, we would obviously want to add in a few more uh, assets. So what what's really great is we can just duplicate this whole node setup. We don't have to create a new particle system. We don't have to do anything fancy. We can just grab these nodes, and if we want all these uh, exact nodes duplicated and keep the connection to the plane, we can just press Control Shift and D to duplicate those, and it'll maintain that connection over here. And then if we just sort of grab this Join Geometry node down here to give us some space, we can duplicate this Join Geometry node and feed it in right up there, and then just plug our new sort of group here into that join geometry. And now all we have to do is swap out that collection for a different collection. So let's say we wanna add some flowers into our scene. And there you go, the flowers are scattered now, but they're using the exact same um, settings as our grass clumps. So what we can do is of course, just quickly modify those. If we wanna scale the flowers up, if we wanna change the rotation or the seed value, or uh, more importantly, the distribution value. If you want a field full of flowers there, that's fun to say, field full of flowers. Um, or, you know, if you just want them to be sparse, you can do that as well. The other really cool thing here is you see this density attribute input right there. That allows us to input vertex point information. So if you say wanted flowers to only sort of be around here on this plane, well, what you can then do is come over here to vertex groups and create a new group, let's name this flowers. And we can actually use weight paint here and just kind of paint wherever we want the flowers to be. If you wanna see this effect uh, be responsive, then what you can do is just type this name that you created for your vertex groups and just copy and paste it right into that density attribute node. And now all the flowers are confined to whatever vertex group you're painting here. So we can dial up the density to really show this. If I just, anywhere I paint, you can see those flowers are being scattered just like that, which is really cool. And we could do the same thing for the grass. If we wanted the density to be confined to a certain area of vertex groups, we could do the exact same thing. So now we have a nice little uh, field here. I'm gonna turn the density down of those flowers and let's keep going. Let's add one more layer just for demonstration purposes. I'm gonna uh, control shift D on that and then duplicate this join geometry node again, plug in that next layer. And this time, if you're using the foliage group uh, that I provided for you, then some of the assets are broken up into collections and some are just individual assets because there's just one of them. So uh, like the clump of weeds, that's just one asset. There wasn't a group of those. So we can actually just link an individual object as well. And you can see those uh, took on this same vertex group. So I want them to just be everywhere. So I'm gonna delete that density attribute node. And now we have this clump of weeds um, scattered all over this plane and I can adjust the seed value of the rotation um, and then get some random values there just like that. 
I'm going to check the density of that down to 0.5 and then I'm going to take the scale down a bit too so that the weeds aren't everywhere. And uh, now that I'm kind of liking the way that's looking, I might increase the density of my overall grass so that there's just more of a field there. And uh, this is just, it's so great because you have a nice organized little system here. And because they're nodes, uh, if you watch my other tutorials, you know how much I like organizing my node groups. So uh, you can add a frame here if you want to get really fancy and put each of these little sections into a frame. So if I want to uh, make a fancy group here, name my frame uh, weeds, give that a specific color, and then we can do the same thing with uh, the flowers. So there you go. So now you have uh, a nice, really usable little template. And then you could save this out and easily um, know exactly where to go if you want to affect each individual group. So if you want to change the density up, change the rotation around. Um, this is really powerful for making grow animations because obviously these values can now be animated. So if you wanted to set a keyframe on uh, say the max scale value and have it grow up like this, then you could have sort of a a growing animation. Or the same thing with the density. If you just wanted to have things scatter pop on like this, um, I think about you know uh, using the same process for a tree and having you know a time lapse turn to autumn or something. You can have things animate this value on and off. And that's something that I think is really cool. There's a bunch of other nodes in here. I'd encourage you guys to just check them out and see, just play around with what each one does. Like a mesh Boolean, that can do some really great things. There's there's really too much to go over right now, but another one I do wanna just, a, a simple one is this value node. And this can be really useful. Um, if you plug in this value, say to like the seed aspect of each of these, then um, what you could then do is once you have your entire sort of system set up and say you get a camera in your scene and you want to just kind of randomize everything a little bit you could uh, just click through this different uh, value right here and that randomizes the seed of all of those groupings so that's that's a really cool thing and just another another way why this this method of geometry nodes gives you such an unlimited uh, number of customizations and and abilities to quickly scatter different foliage things and and make something really cool really quickly so again so much you can do here uh can't go over everything i really wish i could but hopefully you guys get a good idea of just how easy it, these geometry nodes are and how they're really nothing to be afraid of um, i was really hesitant to kind of jump into them but after sort of seeing what they can do and how quickly it is to especially scatter things like foliage it's really cool um, I'd love to jump into it more, but I wanted to keep this video short. So I hope you guys find this useful. And if you do end up downloading that pack, not to oversell it, it does help me out a lot. It helps me keep making these videos. And it's just, uh, right now it's on sale for six bucks right from my website. So link in the description, go check it out and please share with me what you guys make with this and, uh, the different methods that you find with geometry nodes. I think these are going to keep getting a lot cooler and we're gonna be able to uh, keep doing a lot more interesting stuff with these in the future. Thanks again for watching everyone. I'll see you next time. Good day, I'm Andrew Price. No, that's not right.